Hi, I'm Jeffrey Schmidt at Jeffrey Schmidt Music. And today I have a, an interesting experiment for you. So here we're going to look at how mic distance on a guitar cab affects the sound. I'm sure many of you are aware of how that goes. Something you may not have thought of is how to use mic positioning in order to effectively mix while you're recording. So that's what my short video today is going to be about. So the idea that we have here is I'm going to use the bass and drum sample from my previous video called Bass Overdrive Shootout. And I'm going to take the sample from the Tech 21 Sansamp BDDI. I'm going to take that and I'm going to try to find the best mic position on my guitar amp as far as how that fits in the mix. Now often when we record guitar, we just record the guitar and then we listen to see which mic position pleases us best alone. However here, as I said, we're going to be placing the mic so that the mix is best, which is a sort of different approach. And in order to use it, you have to know what your mix is going to be in advance. So here I have a bass riff and I'm going to have a guitar riff that's just an octave up from it. And then I'm going to move the mic around and record several passes in order to see how they fit best together. Here's the gear that I'm using on the electric guitar. It's my Fender Pawn Shop 51 going into my Ibanez TSA 15, recorded by an SM57 going into a Daking Mic Pre 1, followed by a warm WA76 compressor. So let's listen to our sound samples. First, we're going to listen to that bass and drums recording by itself. Now that we've heard the bass and drums by themselves, let's add what it sounds like with the SM57 right on the grill in the center of the cone. So next what I did is to put the SM57 one foot back from the center of the cone. Let's listen to that. And so after I had listened to what it sounded like in the mix on the grill and one foot back, I said to myself, well, I want something in between the two. One foot back sounded too bright to me and one uh, and on the grill sounded too dull. So I put it in my mic next in the middle at six inches back. Let's listen to that. Then after listening to what it sounded like six inches back, I said to myself, well, I want something between uh, the, the sound of on the grill, which was too dull, and the sound of six inches back, which was too bright. So therefore I went, of course, to the middle, three inches back. Let's listen to that. After I listened to three inches back, I was unsure of which I preferred between on the grill and three inches back. So I knew that I wanted a, a mic placement between the two. So then I tried one inch back. We'll listen to that. And then finally, I also tried two inches back. Let's have a listen to that. So that was my little journey and how I found the optimal mic placement for my mix. Of course, doing this takes some time, but you can waste even more time if you get a guitar recording, for example, in this case, and then you put that aside, you put together your whole mix, and then 
you, uh, you go to mix it, and no matter what you do in the mix, you're not happy with the result, then you'll have to go back and get out all your guitar gear again in order to record that part again. Of course, if you're recording somebody else, they might no longer even be there. So it does take some time, but of course with experience, you'll learn how your gear fits together so that you can have an optimal mix right out of the gate. When I say an optimal mix, I mean the best mix that you can have just with raw recordings. That's my goal. Of course, you're going to mix it in the box afterwards and uh, optimize, make the mix sound even better. But our goal here is to get the best, do the best that we can right out of the gate, which is going to save us mixing work later on. And it's also going to save us from having to re-record later on if the recording is so bad in the mix that we just can't make it work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more material like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Have a good one.